a little bit of instruction tonight things, since things are a little different. Um, and also for just recognizing that people who are watching online that may not have any clue what we're doing here at an Easter vigil. And in fact, that could be some of you that have never been to a vigil before and wonder what we're doing here. So the vigil is really meant to be the third part of the story of Monday Thursday, Jesus' last supper with his disciples, and then the crucifixion, and then Saturday, the vigil, is us sitting and waiting for Jesus to be resurrected. Um, and so in many ways, we sit for quite a while and listen to stories, and then at the end, we celebrate resurrection. We celebrate resurrection tonight. Um, it'll be very different in here when we get to that moment, but for now, we sit in the darkness and wait. Um, the vigil is characterized by sort of a couple different parts. The first part is usually outside around a bonfire, um, just because of all the stuff. And for simplicity, we're just going to be inside here. And it really centers around the Paschal candle. The Paschal candle was one of the last things removed from the space on Thursday. It's the first thing introduced tonight, um, and as light becomes to fill our space. And so the candle, um, we begin the back, Pastor Susan and I will, with the Paschal candle. And there's some ritual that surrounds that, marking out the year and Alpha and Omega and some other cool parts. And then it slowly processes forward. And so if you got one of the little candles, um, will pass by slowly so you can light on the aisles there your candle off of the Paschal candle and then share it down your aisle. And it will finally move to the front as there's a long sort of um, beautiful bit of poetry and language about the Paschal candle and God's work through light. Um, and then after that, the candle will be placed in its stand and we'll hear 12 readings from the Old Testament. Um, really, they're meant to tell the story of God's people leading up to Jesus and in many ways foreshadow Jesus. And the readings tonight will be done by many of you and folks that uh, were not able to be here or comfortable being here. And so they'll be live streamed and they'll be on the screen for you to see them here, which I think is a really cool thing. People from even like Florida will be doing readings tonight. Um, and then after the 12 readings, the space is transformed into resurrection and we celebrate the sacraments, affirmation of baptism and then communion. Um, and afterwards, for those here, you are invited downstairs to live into a very ancient tradition of the church, and that is to celebrate resurrection with cake and champagne. And um, for people under champagne drinking age, there's alternate drinks down there. There's sparkling uh, juice, and there's also water and cupcakes. and just So everyone's welcome to come downstairs to continue the, the celebration of resurrection tonight. Truth be known, this is my favorite worship of the whole year. This one's the best. And even though we're not doing it like we maybe normally do, it's still going to be amazing. I do want to say one really unfortunate word, and that is that Pastor Jocelyn, after church last night as she was sleeping, like got a fever, and it went away, and she was feeling better, but went and got like a COVID test. Um, but it's one of those ones that takes a little while, so she and then got a rapid one, and it came back negative, but as they were, like, as they took her temperature and stuff, her temperature was up again, and they really, really urged her not to be in church until the COVID test comes back, which likely means our dear pastor will not be able to be in church for Easter Vigil or Easter. Like, is there a, a worse thing than that? She's heartbroken, and I'm heartbroken for her. But I know she's watching and with us tonight, and uh, we are brainstorming ways perhaps she could be part of worship tomorrow too, if not in person, which is what we're doing with other people tonight. They're part of worship, though not in person. So Pastor Jocelyn, we miss you, and uh, expect that test to come back negative and be okay. Okay, I'm going to walk to the back of the space. And give just a moment for us to pause and continue to be in silence for a little bit. And then I'll invite us all to stand and we'll face the rear where the candle will be lit and begin from back there.
Please rise. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Sisters and brothers in Christ, on this most holy night, when our Savior Jesus Christ passed from death to life, we gather with the church throughout the world in vigil and prayer. This is the Passover of Jesus Christ. Word and through water, we proclaim Christ's death and resurrection, share Christ's triumph over sin and death, and await Christ's coming again in glory. Let us pray. Eternal God, in Jesus Christ you have given the light of life to all the world. Bless us and increase in us the desire to shine forth with the brightness of Christ rising until we feast at the banquet of eternal light through the Son of Righteousness, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ yesterday and today, the beginning and the ending. To Christ belongs all time. To Christ belongs glory and dominion. To Christ belongs all ages. Now and forever. Amen. The light of Christ rising in glory dispels the darkness of our hearts and minds. The light of Christ, thanks be to God. The light of Christ, thanks be to God. The light of Christ, thanks be to God.
Rejoice now, all heavenly choirs of angels, and celebrate the divine mysteries with exaltation. And for the victory of so great a king, sound the trumpet of salvation. Exalt also, O earth, enlightened with such radiance, and made brilliant by the splendor of the eternal King. Know that the ancient darkness has been banished from all the world. Be glad also, O Mother Church, clothed with the brightness of such a light, and let this house resound with the triumphant voices of the peoples. Wherefore, dearly beloved, who stand in the clarity of this bright and holy light, join with me, I ask you, in praising the loving kindness of Almighty God. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son, who lives and rules with the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should with full devotion of heart and mind and voice Praise the invisible God, the Father Almighty, and the only Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who by his precious blood redeemed us from the bondage to the ancient sin. For it is indeed, is the Paschal Feast, in which the true Lamb is slain, by whose blood the doorpost of the faithful are made holy. This is the night in which in ancient times you delivered our forebears, the children of Israel from the land of Egypt and let them drush us through the Red Sea. This indeed is the night in which the darkness of sin has been purged away by the rising brightness. This is the night in which all who believe in Christ are rescued from evil and the gloom of sin are renewed in grace and are restored to holiness. This is the night in which, breaking the chains of death, Christ arises from hell in triumph. O night truly blessed, which alone was worthy to know the time and the hour wherein Christ arose again from hell. This is the night of which it is written, and the night is as clear as the day, and then shall my night be turned to day. The holiness of this night puts to flight deeds of wickedness, washes away sin, 
restores innocent to the fallen, and joy to those who mourn. Cast out hate, brings peace, and humbles earthly pride. Therefore, in this night of grace, receive, O Holy Father, this evening sacrifice of praise, which the church lays before you in the solemn offering of the candle. We sing the glories of this pillar of fire, the brightness of which is not diminished, even when its light is divided and borrowed. For it is fed by the melting wax, which the bees your servants have made for the substance of this candle. O night truly blessed, in which heaven and earth are joined, things human and things divine. We therefore pray to you, O Lord, that this candle burning to the honor of your name will continue to vanquish the darkness of this night and be mingled with the lights of heaven. May he who is the morning star find it burning, that morning star which never sets, that morning star which, rising again from the grave, faithfully sheds light on all the human race. And we pray, O Lord, rule, govern, and preserve with your continual protection your whole church, giving us peace in this time of our Paschal rejoicing. Through the same Lord Jesus Christ, our Son, who lives and reigns with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. David. The first reading is from Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through 31, and chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And, the good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. 
And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky and there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the earth dome of the sky to separate the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons for days and for years and let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth and it was so god made two great lights the greater light to roll the day and the lesser light to roll the night and the stars god set them into the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth to roll over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God said that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit, you shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed, it was very good, and there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to Let us pray. Almighty God, you wonderfully created the dignity of human nature and yet more wonderfully restored it. In your mercy, let us share the divine life of the one who came to share our humanity. Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. 
Amen. The second reading is from Genesis chapter 7. Then the Lord said to Noah, Go into the ark, you and all your household, for I have seen that you alone are righteous before me in this generation. Take with you seven pairs of all clean animals, the male and its mate, and a pair of animals that are not clean, the male and its mate, and seven pairs of birds of the air also, male and female, to keep their kind alive on the face of all the earth. For in seven days I will send rain on the earth for forty days and forty nights, and every living thing that I have made I will blot out from the face of the ground. And Noah did all that the Lord had commanded him. In the six hundredth year of Noah's life, in the second month, on the seventeenth day of the month, on that day all of the fountains of the great deep burst forth, and the windows of the heavens were opened. The rain fell on the earth forty days and forty nights. On the very same day, Noah with his sons Shem and Ham, Japheth and Noah's wife, and the three wives of his sons entered the ark. They and every wild animal of every kind, and all domestic animals of every kind, and every creeping thing that creeps on earth, and every bird of every kind, every bird, every winged creature, they went into the ark with Noah, two and two of all flesh in which there was the breath of life. And those that entered, male and female of all flesh, went in as God had commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. The flood continued forty days on earth, and the waters increased and bore up the ark, and it rose high above the earth. The waters swelled and increased greatly on the earth, and the ark floated on the face of the waters. At the end of the forty days, Noah opened the window of the ark that he had made and sent out the raven, and it went to and fro until the waters were dried up from the earth. Then he sent out the dove from, a, from him to see if the waters had subsided from the face of the ground. But the dove found no place to set its foot, and it returned to him to the ark, for the waters were still on the face of the whole earth. So he put out his hand and took it and brought it into the ark with him. He waited another seven days, and again he set out the dove from the ark. And the dove came back to him in the evening, and there in its beak was a freshly plucked olive leaf. So Noah knew that the waters had subsided from the earth. Then he waited another seven days and sent out the dove, and it did not return to him any more. In the six hundred first year, in the first month, on the first day of the month, the waters were dried up from the earth. And Noah removed the covering of the ark and looked, and saw that the face of the ground was drying. In the second month, on the 27th day of the month, the earth was dry. Then God said to Noah, Go out of your ark, you and your wife, and your sons and your sons' wives with you. Bring out with you every living thing that is with you, all flesh, birds and animals, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth so that they may abound on the earth and will be fruitful and multiply on the earth. So Noah went with, out with his sons and his wife and his sons' wives. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. 
God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you. For all future generations, I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. Let us pray. O God, strength of the powerless and light in all darkness, look in mercy upon your church, a wonderful and sacred mystery that will be May that will be in May of the Ark, peace in midst of chaos. Let the whole world come to see that what's fallen is being raised up, that what was old is being made new, and that all things are being restored to wholeness through the one from whom they first took being, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. A reading from the book of Genesis, chapter 22. After these things, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, who said, Here I am. God said, Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. Offer him there a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I shall show you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. He cut the wood for the burnt offering and set out and went to the place in the distance that God had shown him. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place far away. Then Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac. And he himself carried the fire and the knife. So the two of them walked on together. Isaac said to his father Abraham, Father, and he said, Here I am, my son. Isaac said, The fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Abraham said, God himself will provide the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So the two of them walked on together. When they came to the place that God had shown him, Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. The angel said, Do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. He went, took the ram, and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord. Because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will indeed bless you and I will make your offspring as numerous as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gate of their enemies and by your offspring shall all the nations of the earth gain blessings for themselves because 
you have obeyed my voice. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. God and Father of all the faithful, you promised your servant Abraham that he would become the father of many nations, and through this gift of faith, you increase your chosen people throughout the world. Form us anew by the death of your Son, that we may joyfully accept the new life of grace given through him, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. The fourth reading is the deliverance at the Red Sea from Exodus chapter 14, verses 10 through 31, and chapter 15, verses 20 through 21. As Pharaoh drew near, the Israelites looked back, and there were the Egyptians advancing on them. In great fear, the Israelites cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us, bringing us out of Egypt? Is this not the very thing we told you in Egypt? Let us alone and let us serve the Egyptians, for it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. But Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm and see the deliverance that the Lord will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you only have to keep still. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. But you lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, that the Israelites may go into the sea on dry ground. Then I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they go in after them. So I will gain glory for myself over Pharaoh, and all of his army, his chariots, and his chariot drivers. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gained my glory for myself over the Pharaoh, his chariots, and his chariot drivers. The angel of God, who was going before the Israelites' army, moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was there with the darkness, and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire, fire and cloud looked up upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, Let us flee from the Israelites, for the Lord is fighting them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and their chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea returned to its normal depths. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers. The entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea, 
not one of them remained. But the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord and be believed in the Lord and his servant Moses. Chapter 15. Then the prophet Miriam, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine in her hand, and all the women went out after her with tambourines and with dancing. And Miriam sang to them, Sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. Horse and rider he has thrown into the sea. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. O God, whose wonderful deeds of old shine forth even to our own day, by the power of your mighty arm, you once delivered your chosen people from slavery under Pharaoh, a sign for all of us that salvation offered to everyone by the water of baptism. Grant that all the peoples of the earth may partake in the salvation of the Israelites and together dance on the safe side of the sea through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Fifth reading, Isaiah, chapter 55, verses 1 through 11. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come, buy, and eat. Come buy wine and milk, without money and without price. Why do you spend your money on that which that is not bread, and your labor for which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good. And delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know and nations that you do not know shall run to you. Because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him when he is near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord that he may have mercy on them and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways your ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are the ways higher than yours, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and snow come down from the heavens, and they do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes from my mouth, it shall not return empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the things for which I sent. Let us pray. Holy God, you created all things by the power of your word, and you renew the whole earth by your spirit. Give now the water of life to all who thirst for you, that rejoicing in your covenant of mercy, 
we may bring forth abundant fruit through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. A reading from Proverbs. Does not wisdom call, and does not understanding raise her voice? On the heights, beside the way, at the crossroads, she takes her stand. Beside the gates, in front of the town, at the entrance of the portals, she cries out. To you, O people, I call, and my cry is to all that live. O simple ones, learn prudence. Acquire intelligence, you who lack it. Hear, for I will speak noble things, and from my lips will come what is right. For where my mouth will utter the truth, wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are righteous. There is nothing twisted or crooked in them. My fruit is better than gold, even fine gold, and my yield than choice silver. I walk in the ways of righteousness, along the paths of justice, endowing with wealth those who love me and fulfilling their treasures. Let us pray. O God, our wisdom, teacher of truth, you fill your house by continuing to call all peoples into the way of insight. With your food and drink, sustain us in the path of justice, and by your love, watch over those whom you have called through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Seventh reading is from Ezekiel, the 36th chapter. I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the countries and bring you into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water upon you. You shall be clean from all your uncleannesses. And from all your idols, I will cleanse you. A new heart I will give you and a new spirit I will put within you. And I will remove from your body the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and make you follow my statutes and be careful to observe my ordinances. Then you shall live in the land that I gave to your ancestors. You shall be my people, and I will be your God. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. God of holiness and mercy, in the dying and rising of Christ, you have established a new covenant of reconciliation for us all. Cleanse our hearts and give us a new spirit, that by your saving grace we may live as your people through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord.
The eighth reading is from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, verses 1 through 14. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophecy to these bones, and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked up, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them, then he said to me, Prophecy to the breath, prophecy, mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore, prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves. O oh, my people! and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live. And I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken, will act, says the Lord. This ends the reading. Let us pray. Living God, by the death and resurrection of your Son, you have brought us out of sin into righteousness and out of death into life. Breathe into us your life-giving Spirit, that receiving the gifts of word and sacrament, we may live in the hope of all your blessings to come. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. The ninth reading from Zephaniah, the third chapter. Sing aloud, O daughter Zion. Shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall fear disaster no more. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands grow weak. The Lord, your God, is in your midst, a warrior who gives victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. 
He will exalt over you with loud singing as on a day of festival. I will remove disaster from you so that you will not bear reproach for it. I will deal with all your oppressors at that time. And I will save the lame and gather the outcast. And I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time, I will bring you home at the time when I gather you. For I will make you renowned and praised among all the peoples of the earth when I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. Let us pray. Sovereign God, by the resurrection of your Son, you offer us victory in our struggles. A city for our refuge, the joy of the beloved, and festival celebration. Gather all the outcasts into your mercy and restore your whole creation through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The tenth reading comes from Jonah, chapter 1 and chapter 2. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai, saying, Go at once to Nevaeh, the great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah set out to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid his fare and went on board to go with them to Tarshish, away from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord hurled a great wind upon the sea, and such a mighty storm came upon the sea that the ship threatened to break up. Then the mariners were afraid, and each cried to God. They threw the cargo that was in his ship into the sea to lighten, lighten it for them. Jonah, meanwhile, had gone down into the hold of the ship and had laid down and was fast asleep. The captain came and said to him, What are you doing? Sound asleep. Get up. Call on your God. Perhaps the God will spare us a thought so we do not perish. The sailors said to one another, Come, let us cast lots, so that we may know on whose account this calamity has come upon us. So they cast lots, and a lot fell on Jonah. They said to him, Tell us why this calamity has come upon us. What is your occupation? Where do you come from? What is your country? And of what people are you? I am Hebrew, he replied. I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. Then the men were even more afraid and said to him, What is this that you have done? For the men knew that he was fleeing from the presence of the Lord because he had told them so. They said to him, What shall we do to you that the sea may quiet down for us? For the sea was growing more and more tempestuous. He said to them, Pick me up, throw me into the sea. Then the sea will quiet down for you. For I know it is because of me that this great storm has come upon you. Nevertheless, the men rowed hard to bring the ship back to land, but they could not, for the sea grew more and more stormy against them. Then they cried out to the Lord, Please, O Lord, we pray, do not let us perish on account of this man's life. Do not make us guilty of innocent blood, for you, O Lord, have done as it pleased you. So they picked up Jonah and threw him into the sea. And the sea ceased from its raging. Then the men feared the Lord even more, and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows. But the Lord provided a large fish to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Chapter 2. 
Then Jonah prayed to the Lord, his God, from the belly of the fish. Let us pray, O God of deliverance. You saved Jonah through the waters of death. And after three days, you brought him to new life. Speak to us by this sign and call us to repentance, that we may heed the voice of your risen Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. The word of the Lord. Our 11th reading is from Isaiah, chapter 61, verse 1 through 4, and 9 through 11. The Spirit of the Lord, God, is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim, proclaim liberty of the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn to provide for those who mourn Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of the faint spirit. They will be called oaks in righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. Their descendants, shall be known among the nations, and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people of whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole beginning shall exalt in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. And as a bridegroom decks himself in the garland, as a bride adorns herself with her jewels, for as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. O God, the life of all the people, the life of all the earth through the ages of you, sustain and comfort your people. In your cloth, clothe us with beauty and joy. Anoint us with the spirit of your resurrection, that we may ex extend your healing to all that is broken in your world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The twelfth reading for today talks to us about the deliverance from the fiery furnace. It comes to us from Daniel 3, verses 1 through 29. 
King Nebuchadnezzar made a golden statue whose height was 60 cubits and whose width was six cubits. He set it up on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Then King Nebuchadnezzar sent for the Sartrops, the prefects, the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the justices, the magistrates, and all of the officials of the provinces and come to the dedication of the statue that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. So the satraps, the prefects, and the governors, and the counselors, and the treasurers, and the justices, the magistrates, and all the officials of the provinces assembled for the dedication of the statue that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. When they were standing before the statue that Nebuchadnezzar had set up, the herald proclaimed aloud, You are commanded, O peoples, nations, and languages, that when you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, drum, and entire musical assembly, you are to fall down and worship the golden statue that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. Whoever does not fall down and worship shall be immediately be thrown into a furnace of blazing fire. Therefore, as soon as all the people heard the sound of the horn, the pipe, the lyre, the trigon, the harp, the drum, the entire musical ensemble, all the peoples, nations, and languages fell down and worshipped the golden statue that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Accordingly, at this time, certain Chaldeans came forward and denounced the Jews. They said to King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. You, O king, have made a decree that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, the pipe, the lyre, the trigon, the harp, the drum, and the entire musical ensemble shall fall down and worship the golden statue. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall be thrown into a furnace of blazing fire. There are certain Jews whom you have appointed over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they pay no heed to you, O king. They do not serve your gods, and they do not worship the golden statue that you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in furious rage, commanded that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought in. So they brought those men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar said to them, is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods and you do not worship the golden statue that I have set up? Now, if you're ready, when you hear the sound of the horn, the pipe, the lyre, the trigon, the harp, the drum, and the entire musical ensemble, to fall down and worship the statue that I've made, well and good. But if you do not worship, you shall immediately be thrown into the furnace of blazing fire. And who is the God that will deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered the king, O oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to present a defense to you in this matter. If our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from this furnace of blazing fire and out of your hand, O oh king, let him deliver us. But if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods and we will not worship the golden statue that you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was so filled with rage against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that his face was distorted. He ordered the furnace heated up seven times more than was customary and ordered some of the strongest guards in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to throw them into the furnace of blazing fire. So the men were bound, still wearing their tunics, their trousers, their hats, and their other garments, and they were thrown into a furnace of blazing fire. Because the king's command was urgent, the furnace was so overheated, the raging flames killed the men that had lifted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But the three men, Shadrach, 
Meshach and Abednego, fell down bound into the furnace of blazing fire. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished and rose up quickly. He said to his counselors, Was it not three men we threw bound into the fire? They answered the king, They're true, O king. He replied, But I see four men unbound, walking in the middle of the fire, and they are not hurt. And the fourth has an appearance of a god. Nebuchadnezzar then approached the door of the furnace of the blazing fire and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out, come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire. And the satraps and the prefects and the governors and the king's counselors gathered together and saw that the fire had not had any power over the bodies of these men. The hair of their heads was not singed, their tunics were not harmed, and even the smell of fire did not come from them. Nebuchadnezzar said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent the angel and delivered his servants who trusted in him. They disobeyed the king's command and yielded up their bodies rather than to serve and worship any god except their own god. Therefore, I make a decree, any people, nation, or language that utters blasphemy against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be torn from limb from limb and their houses laid in ruins, for there is no other god who is able to deliver in this way. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, the hope of the world, by the proclamation of your prophets, you declare to us the word of salvation. By the grace of your spirit, increase the devotion of all the baptized that strengthened by your presence. We may withstand hardship and sorrow and be united with your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. light your love is shining in the midst of the darkness shining Jesus light of the world shine upon us set us free by the truth you now bring to us shine shine on me shine on me
as we gaze on your kingly brightness so our faces display your likeness ever changing from the glory to glory mirrored here by our lives tell your story shine on me In baptism, our gracious Heavenly Father frees us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are born children of a fallen humanity. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are reborn children of God and made members of the church, the body of Christ, living with Christ. And in the communion of saints, we grow in faith, love, and obedience to the will of God. Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you for all sisters and brothers whom you have made your own by water and the word in baptism. You have called us to yourself, enlightened us with the gifts of your spirit, and nourished us in the community of faith. Uphold us, your servants, in the gifts and promises of baptism, and unite the hearts of all whom you have brought to new birth. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. Please rise. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? I renounce them. 
Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism? To live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. People of God, do you promise to support and pray for one another in your life in Christ? We, we do, and we, and we ask God to help and guide us. But instead of coming forward like we usually do, this is a COVID vigil. So we are going to come down the aisle and splash you generously with water while you're singing the next hymn, Morning Cry. And if you're at home, go get some water and splash and jump. Yes. That's a great one. Yes.
Lord be with you. Hey. Oh, the stories we hear tonight of God and God's incredible activity. We hear God in the works of creation. Then we hear God in the works of, of loss and of flood and God destroying. We hear down through the stories of God and God's incredible love of Abraham as he cares for his son. And on through the great stories of the, the Nile Sea and, and the, or the Red Sea and God helping God's people go through there. Though come to the waters, God declares, you who have nothing to offer back. We hear the story of a rebel with Jonah and how God will do what God does even when we don't want to do what God wants us to do. How about the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego walking out of a fiery furnace completely intact? The story of God's people has been great, and God has been great with them throughout the ages. We come to the table tonight hungry, with hands outstretched, ready to be filled by a God who always fills them. And So tonight we remember the words of 2,000 years ago when Jesus gathered with his disciples and said, on the night in which he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. When you gather, do this and remember me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. When you gather, do this and remember me. As God's faithful people have done throughout the generations, upon hearing those words, we pray together. We pray the ancient prayer Jesus taught. So I invite you in whatever way you maybe most love to say it, or the way you learned it, or however is most meaningful, to pray this prayer together. And we pray it at least slowly. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. That is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We will receive communion on the way to the back of the sanctuary. I know I'm in front of you right now, but I'm going to go to the back, and I'll be giving out just the bread uh, for tonight. We, uh, we didn't get out the wine for tonight, but just the bread. But then there's more feast to come downstairs. Um, so this is a moment where we're going to say goodbye to the folks that have been joining us online. Thank you so much for being with us. Um, I hope that this was a really meaningful, powerful experience for you too. Easter worship tomorrow is at 9 o'clock at Faith or Van Kirk and 1045 here and at Rehoboth across our parish. We'd be glad to see you tomorrow in person or online. For now, here in the room, we share the, the good meal that God has offered up for us. And again, there's more to celebrate downstairs with drinks and cupcakes and food. Friends, these are the gifts of God for us, the people of God. Follow me, the feast is there.